Hello, this is your orientationalist in all things Esa Bay, Kurbanzeit and Ali and Nino. Today I would like to speak about Lef Nussimbaum's conversion to Islam and his names Esad Bey and Kurban Said. It is an established fact that Lev Nussimbaum was born in Kiev on 20th of October 1905. His parents were Basia Davidovna Slutsky and Abraham Leibusovich Nussimbaum. From Abraham's patronym Leibusovich we learn that his father was called Leib which is the Yiddish version of Lev or Lion. This also gives proof that there were Jews of Russian acculturation. Lev grew up in Baku, where his father worked in the oil industry, definitely in the field of oil transport. We know the last address. They lived in this house, the other side of which is towards the old city in Baku or the Icheri Shahar, the inner city. I love to imagine that the apartment of the Nussimbaums was towards the Icheri Sheher. Here is the same building from around the corner. As you can see, it faces the old city wall. So, who knows, maybe Lev looked out of one of these windows to the old inner city, which might have sparked his imagination. In his last manuscript, The Man Who Knew Nothing About Love, we find a very intense description of how his love for the world of Islam began. Let me read it for you. But by the way, the old crumbling palace of which he speaks is of course the Shirvan Shah palace in Baku, which obviously was a ruin in Lev's childhood. Today, where I know all the intoxicants of the world, from alcohol to morphine, I know that the most beautiful intoxication is that mysterious rapture which was invoked in me by the sight of the old walls of Baku and the winding arabesques at the gates of the old crumbling palace. Those Arabic archways, the meandering letters, the narrow columns were the first powerful love of my life. Later, as I devoted my life to the study of the Orient, this love became more objective cooler, more conscious. I learned to distinguish styles and to unravel the meaning of the winding letters. At that time, however, the sight of an Arabic arrow bow was an elementary event that shook my soul. In joy and in sorrow, I thought of the supernatural, incomprehensible beauty of those arabesques those lines which the imperious conquerors carved into the walls of the now crumbling court. Throughout my childhood I dreamed every night of the Arab buildings, what I had read, what I had heard, what I had been told, all was mixed up in these dreams. I saw the vast expanse of the Arabian sandy desert, I saw horsemen in snow-white bursums, blowing in the wind. I saw the people of the Prophet praying in the direction of Mecca and I wanted to be one with this wall, with this desert, with its incomprehensible winding script, with the whole Islamic Orient that was so solemnly buried here in Baku under the victorious hammer blows of European culture. To this day, I do not know where this feeling came from, but I know that it was the strongest, most direction-giving feeling of my life. Now, isn't that beautiful? So here, at the end of his short life, he describes how he fell in love with the world of Islam. On their escape route to Europe, after the Bolsheviks had conquered Baku, Lev and his father Abraham Nussimbaum stayed for a few weeks or even months in Istanbul. He writes about this time. I saw palaces, mosques, tombs of the viziers and the sultan. I think I went mad for days. I can hardly recall the feelings of that distant boy who walked through the streets of the caliph's city. 
and visited the mosques, almost staggering with delight. Thanks to Esad Bey's Berlin classmate Alexander Breilov, we know that Esad already might have converted to Islam in Istanbul, or at least tried to convert. Breilov writes about this. When the Nussimbaums fled from Baku to Constantinople in 1919, young Lev asked the mullah of a neighboring mosque to accept him formally into Islam. After a comic interlude due to the mullah's ignorance of the similarity between Judaism and Islam as far as the practice of circumcision is concerned, an interlude which Esad used to recount with his customary mixture of earnestness and burlesque, he became formerly a Muslim. His name was changed from the Russian Lev, meaning lion, to its equivalent in Turkish, Esad. At first he spelled it Assad, Azerbaijani fashion. Now we don't know if Esad made this story up for his classmates, because we do know that he converted in Berlin. I can very well imagine that this anecdote from Istanbul is true, but perhaps that Imam from the neighboring mosque couldn't give him a sufficient document confirming his change of religion. But such a document is very important for converts. A while ago, I received the document which Esad received from the Imam of the Turkish Imperial Embassy in Berlin and which confirms officially his conversion to Islam. I will show it and its translations into English and Azerbaijani at the end of the video. What I am reading here is my own English translation of that certified German translation. But don't be surprised that uh, it is again said here that he was born in Baku, which he wasn't. Now, translation of a document in the Turkish language in the name of Leo Esad Bey Nusimbaum, Turkish Embassy, number 210. The above-named Leo, son of Abraham Nusimbaum of the Mosaic faith, Russian subject, born in Baku on October 20th, 1905, has converted to Islam by his own free will, adopted the name Esad Bey and professed the Mohammedan faith before the witnesses listed below. In recognition of this, the above named has been issued this certificate of authentication, signed by the senior priest of the Imperial Turkish Embassy in Berlin, Hafiz Shukri. So here we have it. Before he converted, he was a Russian subject of the Mosaic faith. In other words, he was Jewish. This document also confirms that he took on the name Esad Bey. Many people change their names when they change their religion, so this is actually quite common. And from this assumed name, we can also conclude that Esad Bey was no pseudonym, as sometimes is written. As Brailov wrote, Esad is the Arabic translation of Lev, and I'm sure you've heard this many times. But where does the word Bey come from? That I will tell you in part two of this video.